If the failsafe on your quadcopter is not working and you are using a FlySky X6B or other FlySky receiver, try switching from iBus to SBus, or if you're using SBus, try switching to iBus. And that basically sums up this video. But if you'd like to see how I do that, then continue watching. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. In this video, we are going to be talking about um, why your failsafe might not be working on your quadcopter, and more specifically, more importantly, how to get your quadcopter working. Uh, get the failsafe working so you can go fly, because nobody wants to just sit there staring at the quadcopter on the desk. That's depressing. So I'm going to show you how uh, I changed that on my quadcopter. It's really quite simple, so uh, you can follow along and we'll get you flying in no time. Stay tuned. Real quick, a couple things I want to mention. So first of all, you need to have your failsafe working to fly. If you don't know what a failsafe is, the failsafe is the pre-programmed pre pre setting uh, that your quadcopter will revert to if it loses connection with your transmitter. Um, and usually this is set to just have the quadcopter drop out of the sky so that way, I mean, as opposed to, you know, it flying away forever and you never see it ever again. N most people don't want that. Now, what I've noticed is that with my FlySky receivers, actually I think all of them, it seems like the failsafe doesn't work well or consistently on iBus, which is which is kind of the, the FlySky fly, fly protocol, uh, receiver protocol. Um, if you're confused about what those things are, don't worry about it too much, but uh, I'll leave links in the description below uh, so that you can learn more about those things. Anyway, FlySky uses iBus, but then there's this other one called SBus, which is commonly used by like FreeSky and, and other uh, other types of receivers. Now the thing is, the, X6, the FlySky X6B receiver, which is what we're going to be talking about today, it doesn't actually say that it can use SBus. It uses it uses iBus. They they say you can use iBus and PPM and stuff, but um, you can use SBus. So if you didn't know that, now you know. There is kind of some controversy as far as like iBus versus SBus and which one is better. We could probably talk a lot more about the differences. Um, honestly, that's something that I need to research more and we can talk about in other videos. But in this video, what I want to focus on is not not the, you know, which one is a little bit better in the, in the hows and the whys and whatnot, but I want to talk about what you can do to go from your quad not working and not being able to fly because you're using iBus to switching to SBus or vice versa and getting your quadcopter flying, get the failsafe working so that you can get out and fly and be awesome. So without further ado, here we go. So you'll notice that this quadcopter is not the Wizard X220, which may be what you have if you're watching this video, but this receiver here is what we're more concerned about. This is the FlySky X6B receiver. So if you uh, do have a Wizard X220 or some other sort of quadcopter like that, um, as long as you're using this type of receiver um, or a similar FlySky receiver, then this all of the principles should apply to you as well. Um, and this is kind of in a state of disrepair, so don't mind the rest of that. Also, just to note, I don't think it matters, but I'm running a, an Omnibus F4 uh, Nano Pro flight controller right here. So first of all, I just want to show you what it looks like um, if you don't uh, have the failsafe set up properly. The receiver's bound and everything, so I'm going to take a battery and plug it in here. There we go. Also, remember, take off your props. Do not do this with your props on, so take them off. Alright, so now let's, let's just flip the arm switch. You can see the motors are spinning. I am going to turn off my transmitter here and the motors just keep on spinning. That's not good, that's not what you want. So we want to fix that. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to go into our transmitter, we're going to press and hold OK. We're going to get, go into the system menu. Um, this is the FSI6X transmitter, by the way. Uh, we're going to scroll down in the system menu to, I passed it, to RX setup. Then we're going to scroll down to output mode press OK. Then, uh, this the P PWM or PPM, that's, that doesn't matter. What we're interested in is whether it's IBUS or SBUS. So we're going to press OK to, to, to move over to this side of the screen. And we want to go from IBUS to SBUS. So we're going to press the down arrow, go into SBUS, press and hold cancel. OK, go back in, make sure it's still set like that on SBUS. And then 
we can go back to our main screen and that's it. We're done on the transmitter side. Okay, the next step is we're just going to take our uh, USB cable connected to our laptop and connect it to our quadcopter so that we can enter beta flight and take care of the beta flight settings. Okay, our quad's connected. We're going to go into beta flight and click connect on the top right hand corner. And there's our quadcopter. We can see it moves when we move it, so there's a good connection. First thing you want to do is go into your failsafe tab on the uh, left-hand side of the screen. If it doesn't show up, go to the right hand, top right corner of the screen and click Enable Expert Mode. And then the failsafe tab and some other tabs should show up. We're going to click on the failsafe tab. And under Stage 2 Settings here, Stage 2 Failsafe Procedure, we want to set this to drop. Now, I mean, you could set this to whatever you'd like. You just got to be careful um, and make sure that you're, you're doing everything correctly so that it will work the way you want it to. Most people like to just have it set to drop. And we could talk about different advantages of that in another video. So I would just put this on set to drop. If it's not on set to drop, just click the drop right there and then click save and reboot. Okay, and then we're now that it kicked us out, we're going to click connect again on the top right hand corner. Now we're going to go into the configuration tab on the uh, left hand column there. And then in the configuration screen we're going to scroll down to the receiver uh, box on the left hand side of the, of the screen. And the serial based receiver, that's fine. You'll see there's a drop down box. That's, that's the one that you want. There are all these other options uh, if you ever need them in the future. And then on the second drop-down box, Serial Receiver Provider, we want to switch from iBus, that's iBus, and then we want to switch to SBus right there. So we're going to switch to SBus. We're going to go down to the bottom right tab or button and click Save and Reboot. And that should be that should be it. So then we are we're already disconnected uh, from Betaflight. We're going to disconnect our flight controller here from the USB. And then we're going to test our failsafe. So we're going to turn on our transmitter. It's always a good idea to turn on your transmitter first before you plug in your battery. Uh, again, there are no propellers on this quadcopter. Take your props off. And then we're going to plug in our battery. And there we go. It's making wonderful sounds. So everything's working good. So the first test is just to make sure that you actually get a connection. And it does respond. This is the arming switch and it's arming so that's great uh, next we're going to actually I don't even this is just my mode switch I just usually put it in acro mode when I do this for some reason but it doesn't really matter so then we're going to raise the throttle a little bit just so we can kind of see what's going on I'm gonna turn my transmitter off and the motors stop so that little that little period in between when the motors they went down in in in, in sound and, and and RPM, but they didn't quite stop. That was the stage one failsafe procedure. So that was basically just giving uh, giving the receiver just a little bit of time um, before it went into the failsafe to basically shut the quad down, just in case maybe you lost connection for just a second. But it shouldn't go on for any more than you know maybe you know maybe two seconds or, or just a, a very short amount of time before your motors just shut off if you have your failsafe set to drop. So there you go, that's all there is to it. Now you got your failsafe working, you can uh, put your quad back together, uh, you can put your props back on and go outside and have a great time flying around. Well, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Hey, I hope this was helpful to you. You know, a lot of this quadcopter stuff is like, it's like a magic trick, you know? Like, you see it the first time, you're like, whoa, how, did, what, how does this work? And then once you learn the, the, the secret of the magic trick, you're like, oh, was that all? You just, like, click a few buttons, and that's not a big deal. But if you don't know which buttons to click, you could, you know, lose sleep over trying to figure out why your quadcopter is not working. So maybe this was helpful. And hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to uh, subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more fun, helpful videos about RC flying things and DIY projects and stuff and uh, leave a comment below telling me um, if, or if you have any questions about this uh, video or comments or uh, maybe you can help other people uh, if they have questions in the comment section. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.
bum, 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 do the dance, do the dance. That's how you get ready for the shot, you know what I'm saying? 